Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. This is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. We are in the continuation of uh, eighth week lecture. Today is lecture number 39 uh, in the domain of theory of elasticity with an aim to solve a particular type of problem related to torsion of cylindrical bodies. We have uh, already covered uh, little bit, we have come across to the displacement equations, we have come across to equilibrium equations for that we got introduced to some other topics like uh, warping and then uh, we will do some more development or uh, general process of analysis today depending on the stress function. And then in the forthcoming lecture, we will solve uh, a specific problem in relation to torsion. So, before we go into the topic, uh, today's topic, it is time to recapitulate. As we have uh, started with the history of solid mechanics or structural analysis, uh, the physicist, famous physicist started this avenue long ago, probably with the experiment of Leonardo da Vinci it started. Uh, he tried to estimate the strength of an wire, it is a nice experiment we have discussed. Not only that history, we have also come across uh, to the development uh, of, of aircraft from Kitty Hawk flight to present day uh, huge aircrafts including the A380 or Antonov 225. So, then we have come across to various types of uh, loads, conceptual structural details, various types of loads in the sense while it is in runway or it is airborne, what are the types of loads uh, are encountered by an aircraft. And uh, not only that, we have gone into detail of uh, how thin wall sections uh, are used to fabricate fuselage and wings uh, different parts. Uh, sparse got introduced to different components with names, the role of those components also we got introduced. We also got introduced which part experience what type of uh, loads more and which part is designed for what type of loads, those with picture preview we have seen. We have come across one uh, agency known as airworthiness agency also, which guides the critical critical uh, conditions, uh, lay, they have laid down some critical conditions, loading parameters for design. After that, we have gone uh, to the flight envelope, load factor, how it is different for different type of aircraft. We have seen uh, or carried out examples to find out bending moment diagram and shear force diagram of, of aircraft wing and fuselage. Truss is the next structure, uh, three dimensional truss also we have used and in this uh, we have solved problems uh, related, related to, related to um, aircraft landing gear which is generally solved considering three dimensional structure concept or truss concept. Then we have come across to the deflection determination procedures, uh, different types of structures, not only determinate, indeterminate also we have solved and we have found out indeterminate reactions, external reactions as well as deflection at uh, different points. And in this method, we have come across with the complementary energy method, we have come across to the total potential energy method, unit load method, dummy load method. <coughs> 
we have also learned a very very important method known as Rayleigh method. Castiglione's theorem is also covered, and then after that we have come or we have started learning the theory of elasticity approach. In theory of elasticity approach, uh, we have we have developed several equations uh, to find out stress, strain and displacement. In that uh, relation we have seen that there are 15 such un unknowns, uh, 6 stress components, stri 6 strain components and 3 displacement components. So, we have found out equations corresponding to those. Uh, so we have also seen the compatibility equations or compatibility conditions which is very, very important to satisfy while we are we are describing a physical a physical entity in terms of mathematics so displacement strain and stresses should maintain the compatibility continuity uh, to some extent so that we have seen and then we have solved a few problems uh, two different approaches we have learned one is a uh, inverse method and the other is semi inverse method. And then we have solved a very, very important problem in, in theory of elasticity that is uh, the last point here mentioned as the effect of circular hole on stress distribution in a plate. We have seen that uh, even it is uniaxially loaded if there is a hole uh, irrespective of the dimension of the hole the stress uh, tensile stress reaches to thrice the uniform stress experienced by the plate in one direction. That is a considerably more stress and uh, that is the reason we have studied it. So, that tensile stress is responsible for opening. We have also seen some critical conditions where how maximum stress may be experienced and we have seen that. Uh, in case of pure shear or while a piece a rectangular segment of plate is under in plane tension and compression, it experiences about 4 times the tension or compression stress. So, that is also very, very important point to note. We have also discussed problems with in relation to crack propagation. We have not gone into crack, crack propagation in detail, but a, a, a starting point or maybe a glimpse of that area we have seen. We have considered some elliptical hole and then we have seen that how at the tip uh, the stress becomes uh, very, very high and leads to failure, it propagates. We have also seen that it is a very easy way to arrest the crack if we if we can are able to drill a hole at the tip of the crack. So, that uh, that restricts the stress to the three thrice the uh, stress experienced in general. So, with those notes we have uh, attempted uh, the cylindrical body uh, cylindrical body uh, of irregular cross section not circular cross section. And then we have tried to find out the equilibrium equations and then with the stress uh, function approach we will see how these things can be solved. So, that is what the stress function approach we will be covering today. And uh, in this stress function approach how do we get the other equations that we will see. So, the stress fu function method of solution stress function method of solution, uh, let us uh, consider the free torsion case discussed above. So, again we are already introduced to the concept of free torsion. What is free torsion? We have assumed that no cross section, not even the end cross section is restrained to deform out of its plane. And that is the reason we are saying it is a free torsion. We will be solving that type of problem. And if it is there, if it is a non circular cross section, we will see it experiences 
warping. So, we have seen with drawing in the last class that how a rectangular uh, bar experiences warping and how it gets deformed uh, in a quick look we can again bring back that if this is the cross section the top surface deforms something like this. and it continues for the total. So, similarly for all the surfaces it happens like that. So, this warping is not possible unless it is it is a free torsion. So, considering that we have seen that the equilibrium equations since sigma theta sigma this 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 condition holds. Uh, sigma x not sigma theta sigma r sigma x sigma y sigma z and tau x y. x y is which plane we always consider that this is x this is y and this is z. So, there is no tau x y. So, whatever is there is that tau x z or tau y z. So, it is in the other sense if we say instead of saying x z y z we can uh, be better say that tau z x tau z y that means in this plane whatever is acting is there and that is acting either in this direction or it is in this direction. So, that is the reason this one is we say that tau z x and this one we say that is tau z y. So, with this concept what we have seen is that it holds the equilibrium equation as stated here. And one more thing I remember now last class I forgot to mention while we were finding out the displacement u and v uh, the equations whatever we found out there we are supposed to consider that theta z is very very small. And cos theta z is equals to 1 and sin theta z is equals to theta z. Unless you consider that uh, we would not get the uv exp uh, expressions what you, we have used in the last lecture. So, with that small note let us proceed. Excuse me. So, uh, with that small note let us uh, proceed further. So, this may be satisfied by stress function phi, this equilibrium equations where the stress function is defined in terms of uh, tau z x and tau z y or y z as it is given one is positive the other is negative and the derivative is also may be noted tau z x is with respect to y tau z y is with respect to x and minus. So, this 1 to 3 is nothing but these are the equations I have brought again uh, to that. So, if we use these equations and these relations easily we can uh, say that the grad square tau y z is equals to 0. So, these two relations hold. So, del 2 tau y z del x 2 del 2 tau y z del y 2 is equals to 0 plus this is equals to 0 and del 2 tau z x del x 2 plus del 2 tau z x del y 2 is also equals to 0. So, with this note we proceed to the next slide. With respect to the stress function if we take back uh, we, we can easily see, see that del del x of grad square phi is equals to 0 and del del y of grad square phi is also equals to 0. From which we can say since this is x derivative and this is y derivative and both are coming to 0 uh, there must be it must be equated plus of these two must be equals to some constant value and that is why from mathematical conclusion why we get that we consider that this is a constant value and generally this constant is given by 
in this particular discussion as F, capital F. So, with that note, uh, let us see what we have. Thus, any function satisfying the above equation will satisfy the compatibility and equilibrium conditions and will yield stress found from the derivatives of the stress function. So, it is quite clear if phi satisfies this and if we know the phi, we can find out the stresses. The functions will correspond to the problem in hand if it is also satisfying the given boundary conditions of the problem. So, boundary condition has to be satisfied for a particular type of problem and then it will represent that particular uh, problem's solution. The fundamental boundary conditions in the torsion problem is determined by the fact that the outer surface of the cylindrical body is free of any normal stress. This is quite important. We do not assume any, any force on the outer, outer body and uh, if we do some mathematical uh, jugglery that I have skipped, what do we get? We get a nice equation which is there in the next page. This equation we get and uh, let us see. Considering equilibrium of the general three dimensional element uh, that is what from the equilibrium concept of uh, external forces whatever you, you are taught earlier. If you follow those things and uh, if you uh, follow a simple st steps as described uh, in all almost all standard books you will find out that it shows that it may be proved that the torsional moment T holds the following relation with respect to the stress function phi. So, this is satisfied. So, this you may say as the boundary condition with respect to the surface forces. So, that is the equation we have. We need to satisfy this as a boundary condition for to get a solution of any particular problem. Considering the displacement, already we have found out these equations are nothing but the displacement equations uh, rearranged in, in this way. In the last class, we have seen del w del x tau z x and divided by g plus theta y and del w del y is equals to tau z y by z minus theta x. Now, if we follow this operation that means, uh, if we divide it and uh, take a derivative with x y and x this is y and this is x and then if we subtract. So, this left hand side portion will vanish and we will have a relation with respect to this, this, this and this that is what we have here and uh, since we are de taking derivative of this part with respect to y, this y also will become 1. So, only theta remains. So, 1 by z del tau z x del y minus del tau z y del x is equals to minus 2 theta. Now, as we have seen in the previous uh, lecture or maybe in the previous slide, if we substitute the value of tau z x and tau z y, what do we get? We get back the equation where it says that del 2 phi del y square plus del 2 phi del x square is equals to a constant or may be defined as f. This equation we have come across already here in this case. And so, once we get that equation in a different way, we say that uh, that f is nothing but the constant minus g 2 theta. So, that is satisfied. So, with this uh, we, we come to the summary of uh, the stress function approach what is required to solve the problem uh, in torsion. Uh, the summary we can say that the, we have two expressions for tau that is tau z x and tau z y del phi del y minus del phi del x we have the equilibrium conditions is equals to f and f is equals to minus 2 g theta. We also have uh, the boundary conditions which says that t is equals to twice double integration phi del x del y. So, with that note uh, we will end today's lecture and we will go further proceed to our next problem of solve, finding out solution for a particular type of uh, section that is elliptical section and in that elliptical section we can we can solve the, those problems 
and find out uh, the solution for uh, almost all components up to displacements. So, with that note, uh, we come to the slide of uh, references. Uh, these are the standard references, all these problems are solved there and uh, I thank you for attending this course. Before I thank you the at, uh, that we have uh, what we have learned in this class is that the stress function method of solution. And uh, with that note, uh, I thank you for attending this lecture and we will proceed to solve a very nice problem which gives you insight into the um, torsional problem where warping is uh, inevitable unless it is a circular section and we will conclude mathematically whatever we are talking about. If we will see that we will get the equations where if it is a circular section it will not show any warping, if it is a non-circular section it will show warping. And not only that we will also get introduced with the, with the values of the polar moment of the area what we use to find out um, shear stress as well as uh, the rotation theta probably is not very, very wise to use if it is a non-circular section. With those things uh, let us end today's uh, lecture. Uh, Thank you for attending.